good day friends you are welcome to today's segment on spend time with jesus and we'll be looking at matthew chapter 5 and verse 12 and so which says rejoice be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you jesus has declared that those treated badly on his account are blessed and they should rejoice and be glad so how should believers respond to these kinds of persecution number one believers are not called to retaliate or even return evil for evil number two believers are not called to suck in self-pity over the persecution as a matter of fact in verse 12 christ calls believers to rejoice and be glad and be glad in this context can be translated as leap for joy this is what has happened all throughout biblical history one reference to this is in Acts chapter 5 verse 41 when the apostles after being flogged by the Sanderians left rejoicing because they had been counted worthy to suffer for the name. Another reference to draw from this is in Acts chapter 16 verse 25. Paul and Silas while in prison were praying and singing hymns. They rejoiced amid their suffering and surprisingly joy in suffering is not an uncommon experience for those being persecuted for their faith. So did someone say here, how is it possible to have joy when suffering for Christ? Number one, joy in suffering for Christ is a divine bestower, meaning when believers are willing to accept persecution for the sake of righteousness, God gives them a divine bestower of joy. This has been the experience of believers throughout history. An example of this is Stephen, who the Bible says full of the Holy Spirit as he saw Christ being stoned before being stoned in Acts chapter 7 verse 5. Many experienced intimacy with God while suffering for their faith, whereby resulting to great joy. Number two, suffering for Christ is a discipline. When Christ calls us to rejoice and be glad, these were not mere suggestions but holy commands from the lord as an act of obedience we choose to rejoice and leap for joy when criticized for christ we do this in the same way when we give thanks to god in everything as this is the will for god number three joy in suffering for christ is a result of redeemed thinking <laughs> did i hear someone say how okay see Number one, suffering for righteousness is a proof of our salvation. Christ says this about those persecuted for righteousness. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. So to be without some form of persecution may, watch word, may prove we are not truly saved. Number two, suffering for righteousness will be greatly rewarded in heaven. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, happy is the one who endures testing because when he has been proven to be genuine he will be given or rather he will receive a crown of life from, that god promised to those who love him number three suffering for righteousness puts us in the company of the prophets remember elisha was haunted by the by Ahab and jezebel jeremiah was also prisoned and tradition says stoned to death Similarly, Isaiah was sawed in half. John the Baptist was beheaded. Jesus was crucified. Stephen was stoned. Ten out of the eleven disciples, excluding the betrayer Judas, were killed. John the eleven disciples was exiled to the island of Patmos. So, as we rightly suffer for righteousness, it should cause us to be glad, literally, to leap for joy. Paul taught us that belief in Christ is the gift of God, so is suffering for him. Philip chapter 1 verse 29 says, For it has been granted to you not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for him. Suffering for the faith is a gift from God, and therefore we should rejoice in it. Other reasons that scripture says we should rejoice in suffering. Number one, because suffering produces perseverance in us character and hope in god romans chapter 5 verse 4 to 3. number two because in our moments of weakness we can display god's power 
God told Paul that his power was made perfect in his weakness. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 to 9. Number three, because during suffering we experience God's comfort and therefore we are equipped to offer comfort to those who suffer. Second Corinthians chapter 1 3 to 4 says, Blessed is the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all troubles so that we may be able to comfort those experiencing any troubles with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Number five, because suffering for Christ and suffering in general, we realize that though suffering is a cross to bear, it is also a crown to wear and benefits are exceedingly great so much as that biblical mindset Christians can truly leap for joy in them. And so, God is working in believers for his good, making them into the image of Christ to the glory of God. Romans chapter 8, 28 to 29 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. 29 says, For those whom he foreknew and also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many others. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for faithfulness, using the cross for the good. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have been blessed today. Can you leave your comments or questions? And also, please feel free to share this with your friends and family. And do not forget to follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube link in our bio for more. God bless you and see you next time. It's just Tyrese. I mean your humble host, Solomon.